Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, yesterday you had one of the harder boxing articles uh, written by one of the giants of the boxing media, Kevin Io, on Yahoo Sports. Uh, in which he criticized Andre Ward, claimed that Andre Ward made some bad career choices that kept him out of the ring for a prolonged period of time and that Andre should have considered staying with his promoter and, um, you know, having money placed in escrow while the contract dispute went forward. Well, let me just say, understand the world doesn't operate linearly, right? The bottom line is every time a fighter steps in the ring, that fighter is risking everything, right? Not just their career record, but more importantly, their health, right? A fighter really needs to feel that they're being properly compensated for them to risk their lives in a sport where we call concussions knockouts, right? In a sport where one of the points of the sport, one of the ways to win is by giving the other guy a concussion. Now, let me say this. I don't think Mr. Iol would feel the same way if he fully understood that at the end of the day, with less risk, in other words, fewer times in the ring, getting below market compensation, right? With less risk, Andre Ward in the long run is making more money, right? Understand the deal Andre signed with Rock Nation is very lucrative, right? It has many figures on it. Understand, Andre Ward is still unbeaten, right? In boxing, you can't just make a decision that a guy's not fighting and then reach the conclusion that that guy is not getting paid or that guy is not operating in his financial best interests. Sometimes what fighters have to do is turn down deals for X when if they wait, they'll get 3X without the health risks, without the financial risks of taking difficult fights at below market levels. Let me make another argument too. A fighter can sign a good contract with a promoter, a good contract that has guarantees in the contract, minimums in the contract, right? But of course, all of these contracts really hinge on the ability of the other contracting party to deliver. So if that promoter, for whatever reason, can't get the big fights, right, can't generate the revenue, can only give the fighter the guarantee or a little bit more than the guaranteed amount, can't really add an enormous amount on top of that to make it a blockbuster then understand what was a good contract becomes an albatross it becomes a problem right so I understand for casual fans they're gonna look at fighters who are staying out of the ring and they're gonna make the assumption that that fighter is hurting his or her career and is losing money. I'm telling you right now in the United Kingdom, Carl Frotch, who hasn't fought in a year, right, in my opinion, is simply increasing his market value, right, because people who want to see Carl Frotch in the ring are now willing to pay more than they were, let's say, six months ago, right? Other guys are going to emerge in Carl Frotch's weight class. And, of course, Carl Frotch, who's semi-retired, who has relinquished belts, right, 
can then decide if he wants to come back, right? Whether the health risk is worth it, whether the legacy risk is worth it, and if so, at what compensation? Understand, it's possible that what we know about boxing economically might not be true. You just saw Floyd Mayweather relinquish his belts, right? Carl Frotch has relinquished his belts, right? Mayweather fights twice a year. It's the biggest cash cow in the sport. Sometimes scarcity creates demand creates added opportunities for the fighters. Let me shift gears. You know, I personally feel that a Floyd Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya fight would have been hard to watch. You have one guy who's the best in boxing pound for pound, who's still unbeaten today. And you have another guy whose skills deteriorated to the point where he lost some fights at the end against guys who really weren't in his weight class, right? You know, who knows in his heart that he left a lot of his career on the table because of lifestyle choices that ended up with, you know, at least one stint in rehab, right? In the ring, Floyd Mayweather today against Oscar De La Hoya would be a severe mismatch. Right? Severe mismatch. The guys who are in the game today, who are training, who are having fights, who are staying in shape, they can't keep up with, with Mayweather. So how was I supposed to believe that a guy outside of the ring for years would be able to keep up with Floyd Mayweather? So, you know, Oscar De La Hoya has said, look, I'm retired. I'm not coming back. Let me just say good for him. He's saving himself a lot of heartache. But let me just say, I don't think all of us fully understand the big theater that would have happened had that fight taken place. Understand that Oscar De La Hoya used to be a Mayweather fighter. His trainer used to be Floyd Mayweather Sr. Right? Floyd and Oscar were together for several fights. Right, several fights. Understand when Oscar went out there and lost to Floyd Jr., right? He had Freddie Roach in his corner, not Floyd Sr. Floyd Sr. stepped aside because Oscar was fighting his son, right? It was a mutual decision. Oscar wanted him to step aside as well. Now, understand Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s career, many of his big fights actually had a guy in his corner who doesn't speak to Senior. And that's Roger Mayweather. Understand, Roger was an excellent fighter himself. Right? Understand, Floyd Senior and Roger don't get along. Not in the slightest. So had Oscar fought Floyd, I'm guessing Floyd Sr. might have ended up in Oscar's corner. Because this time around, Oscar might have said, hey, look, you know, Floyd Sr., do you want to be my trainer? There's a video here online, on YouTube, right? It has a lot of Money Team members on it. And they're asking these guys, guys like Jelly and Love, whether Oscar would stand a chance against Floyd Mayweather today. And in the video, the only guy who says, yes, I believe Oscar would have a chance, believe it or not, was Floyd Jr.'s current trainer and Oscar's old trainer, Floyd Sr. So had that fight taken place, there's a possibility that both corners would have had Mayweather's as trainers. Right? Both corners may have had Mayweathers who didn't like each other in addition to the fighters themselves not liking each other. Right? Understand every time a Floyd Mayweather fights announced, Oscar De La Hoya comes out 
and supports the guy who's fighting Floyd. Right? Oscar, of course, thought Canelo was going to beat Floyd. Right? Understand, too, one of the people in the industry who Floyd has publicly expressed a lot of admiration for is Richard Schaefer. Right? Who used to be one of the heads of Golden Boy Promotions. Understand, Richard Schaefer and Oscar De La Hoya don't get along. Right? Schaefer left Golden Boy there's been a lawsuit, right? Floyd loves Richard Schaefer. You could just imagine the theater just around that alone, right? If this were a TV show, there'd be several riveting episodes. Understand, too, in the ring, the last man to win on a judge's scorecard, any judge's scorecard, any official judge's scorecard over Floyd Jr. was Oscar De La Hoya. Understand, Floyd wins that fight by split decision. Understand, the cash cow going into that fight was Oscar De La Hoya. It's only after that fight that Floyd Mayweather becomes the big financial magnet in the sport. Right? I know a lot of you are saying, hey, what about the Saul Alvarez fight? A judge in that fight, curiously, in a fight with other lopsided scorecards, right? A judge in that fight had it a draw. Understand that's different than the scoring in De La Hoya Mayweather. Right? There it's a relatively close fight on the judge's scorecards. One judge gives the win to Oscar De La Hoya, right? And so, you know, let me say too that there are other interesting angles between these guys, right? You have Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar's baby. You have Mayweather Promotions, Floyd's baby, right? You have Oscar at odds with Floyd's advisor, Al Heyman, right? I believe there's a lawsuit there too right? Understand, too, both guys fought Manny. Now, granted, it's a different Manny Pacquiao who fought Oscar De La Hoya. I believe Manny's showing some age now, right? But understand, De La Hoya retires on his stool, right? Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, beats Manny by several rounds. In fact, forget my opinion, you look at the official judges' scorecards for yourself, right? I'll say this about Oscar De La Hoya. I believe he's a better fighter than most people remember him to be, right? The way he closes the show against Ike Corte is one of the best boxing finishes I have seen. It's one of the biggest gut check moments in boxing I have seen. Also, a few guys were busted cutting corners against Mayweather, right? We now know that Shane Mosley, at least for some portion of his career, took EPO. We know that Fernando Vargas, El Feroz, and that was a great fight against Oscar, right? We now know that Fernando Vargas failed the post-fight drug test. Oscar was so good that guys were cutting corners against him, right? If you go back and if you look at some Oscar fights, that Felix Trinidad fight, Oscar could easily have been awarded the decision in that fight. Now, I'll agree. Oscar got charity himself. I thought Pernell Whitaker beat him. No one is going to tell me that Felix Sturm didn't beat him. Right? Oscar got both of those decisions. But I will say, I'm one of those who believes that the second Shane Mosley fight, I, I still don't know how Oscar didn't get the decision in that fight. Right? I just don't. Also, the Bernard Hopkins fight, 
I'll say this, Bernard wins the fight by KO, no question about it. But wow, I want people to revisit that fight. I thought Oscar holds his own before the KO. Right? Let me say this too. Oscar and Floyd are different fighters. Right? Oscar really was a lefty. He had a secret in the ring. Same secret Marvin Hagler had. His lead hand was his power hand. That's why during the fight, you'll notice Floyd blocks that lead hand and then starts laughing. Right? Because I believe Floyd felt at that moment that he had cracked the puzzle. Right? Well, understand, Oscar also was a weight gainer. In other words, he would make weight at the weigh-in. But then the night of the fight, he would weigh more than 10 pounds more than he did at the weigh-in. Right? Now, Mayweather has the completely opposite approach. You see Mayweather at the weigh-in? Mayweather will show up on fight night not far off the weight that he weighed at the weigh-in. So, for the Oscar De La Hoya Floyd Mayweather fight, Mayweather on fight night weighs something like 151 pounds or 150 pounds for a fight for the 154 pound title. Understand there's more than one Oscar De La Hoya fight where he just flatly refused to step on the scale for HBO so that they could figure out his weight the night of the fight, right? We knew he made it at the weigh-in, but then Oscar would gain so many pounds after the weigh-in that he didn't want that information disclosed. So understand, Oscar's really a size guy. He would come in much bigger than the weight class, right? Floyd really was more of a skills guy, right? He's in there beating you with strategy, with talent, with skills. He's not trying to outweigh you. He's trying to outthink you, right? I will say, too, that of all the guys Floyd has fought, I thought Oscar had one of the best jabs. And the reason why, style-wise, that fight was so intriguing is you'll notice in that fight, Oscar pumps the jab, right? He throws a lot of volume at Floyd. And I'm telling you, it's one of the closer fights that Floyd has had in his career. So on a host of levels, it's really hard to beat, very hard to beat. The storylines involved in De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, right? Very hard to beat, right? This is one of those rare occasions in sports where there's drama with the fighters themselves. They really don't like each other. There's drama with the corners. Think about it. Floyd's daddy used to be Oscar's trainer, right? Floyd's uncle's wondering why Floyd went to his daddy at this stage of his career as opposed to staying with his uncle, with whom he had some of his greatest professional moments. Right? Think about it, too, just in terms of the guys both being on the promotional side of the game. So, yeah, the drama is top-notch. Right? If there are you know, writers uh, in Hollywood who occasionally come across or stumble across videos like this online. I encourage you to look hard at the De La Hoya Mayweather situation, history. It would make riveting television, right? Boxing at times can be completely riveting. This is one of those times. Anyway, I'm glad the fight's not happening. It'd be different if De La Hoya were active and were beating guys and was still a world-class fighter. But I would say he's one of those guys who flamed out in his late 30s, right? People need to realize that guys like Bernard Hopkins, they're the exception, right? A lot of these guys who continue to dominate in their late 30s, early 40s, 
are really the exceptions to the rule. Understand Marvin Hagler is out of the sport at 32 years old. Understand Ali's skills dimmed greatly when he was in his late 30s. He lost to Leon Spinks. He lost to Trevor Purbeck. Right? Oscar was more of a traditional career path. By the time he's in his late 30s, the reflexes had dimmed. The magic had left the building. Right? That fight would have been lopsided. But I'll say I was intrigued listening to Floyd say, hey, I'm willing to fight Oscar. And Oscar saying, you know what? I'm happy. I'm retired. Right? Riveting. Both guys remain two of the biggest guys in the boxing universe. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.